relationship with God. The cause of happiness is knowing Krishna to be the supreme enjoyer of all activities of the human being. Krishna is the proprietor of all lands and planets. The perfect yogi is the sincerest friend of all living entities. He knows that the living being who is conditioned by the modes of material nature is subjected to the threefold material miseries due to forgetfulness of his relationship with Krishna. But because one is in Krishna, because one in Krishna consciousness is happy, he tries to distribute the knowledge of Krishna everywhere. Since the perfect yogi tries, his, tries to broadcast the importance of becoming Krishna conscious, he is the best philanthropist in the world. And he is the dearest servitor of the Lord. In other words, a devotee of the Lord always looks to the welfare of all living entities. And in this way, he is factually the friend of everyone. He is the best yogi because he does not desire perfection in yoga for his personal benefit, but tries for others also. He does not envy his fellow living entities. Here is a contrast between the pure devotee of the Lord and a yogi interested only in his personal elevation. The yogi who has withdrawn to a secluded place in order to meditate perfectly may not be as perfect as a devotee who is trying his best to turn every man into Krishna consciousness. Thus ends the wonderful transcendental purport. Om Ajnana Timiran Bhasya Jnana Janashalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Jadadhara Shivasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So today we are seeing this verse Atma Pamyena Sarvatra Samam Pashyati Yorjuna Sukham Va Yadi Va Dukham Sayogi Paramomataha some of these words we have seen before also in several verses. Um, we saw the word Sarvatra, Sarvatra Sarvada, Sarvatra Sarvam. We have seen these words in previous several verses. Samam, this also we have seen how there's the equality of vision. Um, Pashyati, this also we have seen. Yo Arjuna, and then of course Sukham Vayadi Vadukham, we have seen many times before in Bhagavad Gita. Sayogi Paramomataha. So let us see what this is. Atma Aupamyena. The word Atma, as Prabhu has described many times before, it has got several meanings. Here, the word Atma is translated as self. And um, that in comparison to oneself, Aupamyena, Upama. Upama means comparison. Aupamyena, by comparison. Sarvatra. What, what happens by comparison? What is he, what is he seeing? Uh, there is a samam pashyati sarvatra, samam pashyati. That is, he is seeing an equality everywhere. All the other living entities, that person is considering as equal to himself. In comparison to himself, he is seeing equal, equal to himself. And what kind of living entities this is? There is no restriction. There is no cap. There is no categorization of living entity. It is not that it is human beings or it is not that they are a particular nationality. It is not limited to any particular race or even a planet or even any universe. All living entities everywhere, all the universes. So what, what is happening here? Atma Aupamyena Sarvatra Samam Pashyati. So comparison to oneself, the yogi is seeing the true equality of all the beings. Now, is it that only it is 
he is equal when that person is also in the same state no it is in any state sukham va yadi va dukham whether the whether that living entity is suffering or whether the living entity appears to be in happiness situated in happiness or appears to be enjoying appears to be in distress whatever be the condition no matter what the condition spiritually the perfect yogi is seeing a true equality of all living entities does not see anybody as higher or lower whether a person is a devotee non devotee person is a complete out and out atheist whether it is just a beast in the jungle or a insignificant ant or any bacteria any indra gopam smallest of living entities doesn't matter or highest living entity brahma no matter who that person is no matter what the condition is the perfect yogi is seeing by his own comparison self comparison to his own self the true equality of all beings so this is a direct result of uh, the previous verses where we have seen how a person who is um, seeing no difference seeing that um, he himself and the super soul are uh, identical in quality qualitatively the same and he is able to see the super soul everywhere he is able to see krishna's energy everywhere he is able to see krishna in every other living entity he is able to see every living entity in krishna so such a person he is able to see true equality now um, so this is a culmination of past several verses um, there are many many layers to the purport that has been given here um, actually uh, last time last week um, prabhu sadanand prabhu had given a brief uh, preview prelude to this verse also saying that this is a this is all the subsequent previous verses were driving up to this verse so there are several aspects here uh, it is possible that i might even miss some maybe we'll cover some tomorrow but uh, let me uh, share with you what i have understood from this verse today there are three fundamental three categories or three high level topics that are being talked about in this purport um the first topic that prabhupada is talking about is the fundamental cause of happiness and distress the perfect yogi is able to see what is it that is causing the happiness what is causing the distress so that these he is able to see that these causes of happiness and distress they are external to the living entity's spiritual condition and they are they do not impact the spiritual identity of the living entity even though the living entity the living entity is currently in a state Uh, of happiness or he imagines himself to be in a state of happiness and distress but uh, factually uh, there is no such happiness or distress material happiness material distress is not actually affecting the spiritual identity of that person the real identity so the perfect yogi is able to see the cause and effect of events that are happening around him which is in other words what the purport here is saying is a true yogi a perfect yogi is actually the greatest scientist because if you see the field of science the field of knowledge it is nothing but an effort to understand cause and effect all the fields of knowledge any field of knowledge you take technology there is of course a field of technology which is application of knowledge that application of knowledge is based upon the understanding of cause and effect if we did not understand that um when uh, beam of light when it is when it falls upon a mirror that it reflects in a particular angle using the theory of reflection and therefore um, the angle of incidence and ang- angle of reflection are equal then scientists would not have been able to technology technologists would not have been able to invent a telescope or a binocular or all those instruments that rely upon the theory of reflection or theory of light so similarly the uh, whatever uh, effect you are observing the scientist tries to observe what is the cause behind it and if you see every field of human endeavor uh, currently is based upon a attempt to study this cause and effect and to exploit that knowledge for our satisfaction for pursuit of happiness so uh, there is a there is a notion that a certain um, set of activities or a certain state of 
existence will lead to better happiness or uh, to experience uh, a state of continuous state of uh, experience of pleasure and there is a belief that this uh, repeated experience of different varieties of pleasure will lead to a state of happiness that a mind will be peaceful the mind will be happy and in pursuit of that goal mankind is chasing after various pursuits in trying to understand cause and effect but here it is said that actually a perfect yogi can has a true understanding a real understanding and that has been summarized in just two lines by prabhupada and there is a third line also um, so we will study what that is and then prabhupada is describing the characteristics of a perfect yogi um, which has been given in the past several verses in this chapter uh, and we will see what those characteristics are and then there is a uh, also a comparison given at the end of the purport on a person who is a uh, a yogi uh, uh, such a perfect yogi can fall into two categories um, a person may be a yogi for with the with the goal of um, his own liberation his own advancement in self realization um, or there is a different kind of a yogi a yogi who is a preacher of krishna consciousness so there is a comparison drawn between that so let us go further and look at these three topics so the first one is the fundamental cause of happiness and distress one who is krishna conscious is a perfect yogi he is aware of everyone's happiness and distress by dint of his own personal experience and there are three points that are mentioned here there is actually a fourth point which i missed i'll just go back and read that out also the living being who is conditioned by the modes of material nature is subjected to threefold miseries due to forgetfulness of his relationship with krishna so there is a cause and effect given here so there is a living being the effect is first described who is conditioned by the modes of material nature so there is a effect and um, what happens when he is conditioned by the modes of material nature he is subjected to threefold miseries so that is the actual observable effect so there is a you, you can say an immediate cause and then there is a effect that immediate cause has a further cause so what is the effect that is observed the effect is he is subjected to threefold miseries so the person is actually suffering adi bhautika adi adhyatmika adi bhautika adi daivika miseries kleshas uh, are being suffered by every living entity the conditioned living entities and why are they suffering like this so the first level of cause that is given is that they are conditioned by modes of material nature karanam guna sangasya sadasa jyoni janmashu so they are conditioned by the modes of material nature in association when they come in contact with the material nature they are conditioned by that modes of material nature uh, and thereby they are subjected to threefold miseries but what is the root cause of this why they are coming under the conditioning of this material modes of material nature and that prabhupada is giving the root cause is due to the forgetfulness of his relationship with krishna and there is again repeated the cause of the distress of a living entity is forgetfulness of his relationship with krishna with god so prabhupada is saying this twice in the purport this is a very very important and fundamental very fundamental because we lead our lives in a series of efforts to mitigate suffering that is our entire life you can see that um, every action that ordinarily a human being takes is actually nothing but an effort to mitigate suffering even the so called attempt to gain pleasure is nothing but a attempt to mitigate the suffering that currently is being experienced in absence of some sense gratification because when you want a senses to be satisfied but the senses but those objects of senses are not always available sometimes they are available sometimes they are not available so when they are not available the senses are hankering after the, after those objects and that satisfaction is not available the pleasure is not able to be met so the moment the pleasure is absent the the satisfaction is not there there is hankering and there is a, a anger there is frustration and there is a distress and there is a deep deep rooted um, a hankering a, a a thirst a thirst a deep rooted thirst for that uh, immediate satisfaction immediate uh, um, amazon prime amazon now two hour delivery um, you know there is a um there is this um, one person who does sometimes does some comedy shows 
So he says how there is a growth of um, shipping that is happening in America and all over the world, in fact, where more and more people want the product, not just uh, in five to seven days of shipping, not just in two days of shipping, not just the same day, not just in two hours. They want it to be kept in their hand. They bring it and keep it here. That will be the next, next uh, uh, feature that will come in Amazon is keep in my hand. You click that, the object will come and be put on your hand. So I want it now immediately. The moment I click the button, immediately it has to come here. That is a desire. You'll see the moment that feature comes, everybody will go for it. Even if it costs $1,000 per month of subscription, people will pay for that. See, if you, if you see uh, when the iPhone was not there, iPhone came after all a few 10 years back. A uh, lot of children here do not even know a time when there was no iPhone. That is an imperceptible passage of time. But there was a time when there was no iPhone. There was a time when there was no Blackberry. But instantly when these objects came, they became popular. How did they become popular all over the world? Because there was a hankering to enjoy in that particular way. And in absence of that particular way of enjoyment, people were a little distressed. And as soon as that, that became manifest, immediately they wanted it because the desire to have it was already present. So the entire life, now if you want to have an iPhone, it's not ordinary life or not enough, no. It has to be bigger. It has to be 12, 13, max, pro, max. All of that has to be there. Ordinary phones are also not enough. So the, um, and to, to get all of that, uh, let us say you're having a apartment. No, 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 apartment is not enough. Look at that house, single family house, two car garage, nice driveway, beautiful lawn, one acre property. I want to be in that. Uh, this apartment is not nice. So what happens because of that? Now you don't have the money for that. Now we have to struggle harder, harder and harder. So actually, if you see, it is not so much that we are enjoying that pleasure when it comes. Actually, the activity is to mitigate the suffering which is there now. And the suffering is in the mind. And why is that suffering there? Because I want something and that something is not available to me right now. So I have to work hard for it. So the entire life is actually spent in a series of mitigation of suffering more than enjoying or seeking of pleasure. The seeking of pleasure is secondary because right now itself, the desire or Trishna for pleasure is there. And in absence of that pleasure, there is a strong um, thirst for that pleasure and that creates a misery. And to mitigate that misery, to forget about that misery, people take up various activities. Whole day, morning to evening, everybody is engaged. And uh, it is just an effort to forget the fact that I wanted those things, I could not get it, let me become engaged in something else. But actually, the correct engagement Prabhupada is giving, the root cause has been correctly, perfectly diagnosed by our Acharyas. And um, the world must know this. This is a real reason why the threefold misery is not acting on us. And what is that? It is due to forgetfulness of our relationship with Krishna. And what is the cause of happiness? The cause of happiness is knowing Krishna to be the supreme enjoyer of all activities of the human being. <clears throat> Krishna is the proprietor of all lands and planets. Sukhridam sarva bhutanam yatvamam shantim vichyati. Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram. Proprietor of all lands and planets. Sukhridam sarva bhutanam yatvamam shantim vichyati. And without shanti, where there can be sukham, happiness. So if you want peace, which is the basis on which happiness can be experienced, then uh, one must understand that Krishna is the proprietor of all the lands and planets. He's a supreme enjoyer of all the activities of the human being. And when a person understands this, then we understand that actually my happiness is, is in serving Krishna, in increasing the pleasure of Krishna, because he is the enjoyer of my activities. He is the person who's supposed to enjoy my activities, not myself. So the fact that I am doing, a, I have any ability to do any work, that fact, that state of my existence right now, in which I have a sum total of various energies that are being bested in me, all those energies actually must be diverted into the service of the Supreme Enjoyer. When our activities are shaped in that manner, that actually gives our enjoyment, that actually gives the happiness of being enjoyed, which is what we are designed for. If you take a hammer and use it as a screwdriver, will the hammer be satisfied? Of course, hammer is a inert living entity, inert uh, non-living entity. So it has no knowledge of satisfaction. But it, it, can, it doesn't work properly, right? You take a hammer and try to use it as a screwdriver. It doesn't work. So our, our spirit soul, we exist, we as our living entity, our design goal, why we exist, 
that purpose is to be enjoyed by the supreme lord and in that enjoyment we have been designed in such a way that we are able to enjoy we are able to enjoy being enjoyed so there is an enjoyment in being enjoyed and all of us have experienced it we have ourselves in small ways we have experienced it even in our life when we serve somebody we get small satisfaction but that doesn't last because it's very difficult to satisfy someone all the time whether it may be your family members whether it is your boss at work friends or even neighbors or anybody his nation roopad often gives the example of mahatma gandhi how he spent his entire life in serving the nation but in the end the nation was not satisfied and roopad says that nobody could have served the nation of india better than mahatma gandhi he gave his entire life for that and he tried to steer the nation to behave in a civilized manner in a gentlemanly manner and he he undertook so many austerities for that but in the end what was the result somebody from the nation shot him that is a, that is the result of trying to uh, be enjoyed by um, conditioned living entities who are temporary whose bodies are temporary their state of mind is temporary it keeps changing today they are happy with you tomorrow they will not be happy with you today your activity will give them enjoyment today tomorrow it will not give them enjoyment so there is no happiness in that but it it is not evident to people we all all of us we we spend our life thinking that i am currently in a state of misery because i am not experiencing a certain joy and that joy can be obtained by in this way it can be obtained either in uh, working towards um, increasing my income and thereby i can purchase more things i can own more things and that ownership that purchase gives me power over others and with that power i can enjoy this is one way in which we think we can enjoy another way in which we can think we can enjoy is we have these interactions with other living entities other people around us and in those interactions we try to please them and we believe that by pleasing them they will become pleased and they become pleased we will also become pleased they will praise us they will say good things about us and that will make us happy but so this we are, there is actually a cause and effect going on in our head because we have seen that sometimes we just take a glass of water and give it to somebody that person becomes happy and they look at you and they say thank you so much and that gives us a pleasure and that gives us a momentary pleasure and that experience of that exchange of giving pleasure to somebody and getting that pleasure now that becomes one experience that we remember and similarly there are a series of experiences based on which we believe we form this uh, equation of cause and effect in our mind and the cause and effect relationship is that if i own more things i can become happy i can get more power if i please somebody then that person becomes pleased then i also become pleased like this there are millions of different small small exchanges that we have and uh, we try to build our equation of cause and effect in our mind but often we are baffled we are baffled because these equations don't always work out just like the example of mahatma gandhi nobody can explain why it is that after having spent his entire life in pleasing the nation how come he was shot how come a section of people are displeased with him and similarly all of us experience this we think we are working extremely hard at work we put everything we could we have spent every ounce of our energy our blood um, our sweat equity into the company but um, you know somebody else is getting the promotion somebody else is getting a bigger hike somebody else is getting an award somebody else is getting a recognition and our uh, work is not being recognized so this is something that we see even at home in the family um, the the tiring untiring work that family members do for each other not always it is appreciated by others it is not always appreciated the children for whom the parents work so hard when the parents grow old the children are not so not as uh, happy to take care of those children just in the way that the parents were to take care of those children and those children were dependent upon them it is not the same so we experience that that equation of cause and effect doesn't seem to always work out but we don't have any other formula and so people are baffled this is where a krishna conscious person perfect scientist is able to see the cause and effect and is giving us the cause and effect what is that cause the cause of happiness is to know krishna to be the supreme enjoyer of all activities of human being krishna is the proprietor of all lands and planets so let us see um, that how the um, people in um, uh, prabhupad says this mm, people are behind being educated and trained to work very hard for sense gratification 
and there is no sublime aim in life. That is, um, we see how um, that um, in, in search of this cause and effect, as I explained, uh, people are not just the uh, work at the time of um, earning your livelihood, but right from the time of education. Uh, the schools, they're giving so many assignments. Children are occupied from 7 a.m. To, uh, to 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Even small children, they have so much homework and they are being trained intensely. The entire education, right from preschool until the point of uh, completing graduation, master's degree, entire 20 years uh, or more of education is um, aimed at primarily training to work hard. How to train to work hard, to make a living so that you can be happy. But is the goal, that goal of um, um, being happy? Uh, and then what is that goal? What is the meaning of the being happy in that? So there is a, um, there is a verse in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, which is um, often quoted by Srila Prabhupada in instructions of um, Rishabdeva. Sri Rishabho Vacha Nayam Deho Deha Bhajam Riloke Kashtam Kama Narhate Vid Bhujam Ye Tapo Divyam Putraka Yena Satvam Shudhye Yasma Brahma Saukyam Panantam. So in this verse, um, Rishabhadeva is um, um, instructing his sons in how to overcome false ego. That is a series of Verses which culminates in that instruction. So the primary instruction is how to realize one's true spiritual identity and dissociate oneself with the bodily identity or the false identity that I am such a person, I am some other person like that. So uh, and uh, so he is trying to instruct his sons on how to um, realize their true identity, how to see, um, how to advance towards that, how to approach that state. Of understanding who we are. And in that series of instructions, this is the first instruction that he gives. And he says that this concept of enjoyment that people have, and by people he means he uses the word deha bhajam, deha bak. It means embodied person. So anyone who is in this material world and has accepted a material body, he calls uh, he ref they are referred to as deha bhajam. Um, so in this world, material world, anyone who is embodied. Um, kashtan kamaan arhate with bujanvi. So they should not be spending their entire day in simply working hard, which um, which are done, which is done like a uh, like a, a animal. And what are the animals that are used here? With bujam, with um, bujam. What are the two animals? With and bujam. That is uh, dog and a hog. A dog and a pig, hog is a pig. So if you see the, the pleasure that a dog is getting, what is the idea of pleasure for a dog? Just eating whatever is there in the street. What is the pleasure, idea of pleasure for a, a hog, for a pig? Eating stool, but that's, that is the enjoying. According to the stool, if you, if you ask that pig, how are you doing, sir? Mr. Pig, are you doing well? He will say, yes, I had such a wonderful feast. All this uh, stool, people are all giving everywhere. I had very nicely. I am just enjoying. This is life. You should experience this. What are you doing sitting in that home and eating all this rice and chapati and all? Waste. Come, enjoy with me. That is what the pig will say. The dog, enjoyment. He will have sex anywhere. Wherever street, he will have sex. No unrestricted sleep. He will sleep on the road. Anything he will do. Unrestricted. So eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, life when it is spent in the pursuit of these activities, that is animalistic living, living on the platform of dog and hog. And if you are working all day, whereas a dog on the street is not even working, he's actually free. And somehow he's getting the food, whatever he wants, he can eat. All day people are working. And in the end, this is all they get, whatever dog and hog can enjoy, the same thing they can enjoy. But Rishabh Deva says the life should not be spent in that. What should be the aim of life then? The aim of life should be tapo divyam putraka yena satvam. So in this word, divyam tapaha, that is very important. So Prabhupada translates the tapo divyam as 
one should engage in penance and austerities to attain divine position of devotional service tapo divyam it is not just ordinary tapa because if somebody is going in a local train and standing for one hour in the morning he doesn't get a seat he goes standing that is also tapasya prabhu you go to wpi do you always get a seat yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> huh? but uh, sometimes you have to go stand in the cold to wait for the bus correct so there are so many people waiting for bus when they get into the bus sometimes you get a seat prabhu is very happy uh, very fortunate he always gets a seat many people don't get a seat i have seen in boston um, i think uh, uh, previously when we were all staying in patnam avenue or even before that um, parker hill avenue 44 parker hill uh, somewhere there are buses right outside and so many people will be standing in the bus stop just like in bombay or bangalore and people will struggle to get into the bus and barely they will get in before the bus leaves that is also tapasya but that is not tapo divyam tapo divyam means to take penance and austerity to attain divine position of devotional service so we'll see what little bit more what this devotional service is um but rishabh deva says that by such activity what happens shuddhyet yasma dhamma saukhyam tvanantam so he attains his heart is purified shuddhyet yasma and brahma saukhyam tvanantam uh, when he attains when a person attains his position he attains eternal blissful life which is transcendental to material happiness and which continues forever so the pursuit of happiness is anyway there it is not that people are not trying to mitigate their misery so anyway they are trying to mitigate their miseries and trying to go for happiness but that happiness which they are trying to obtain is very easily available to a dog or a hog so what is the point of trying for that why should we waste our human endeavor this human energy and the human intellect which is not available for dog and hog why should we waste this in the pursuit of such silly petty happiness and pleasure which is anyway short lived actually a dog can enjoy much more than we can a hog can enjoy much more than we can in the matters of eating sleeping mating and defending we cannot even enjoy that much so why should we waste our energy that's what he says <clears throat> so in the purport prabhupada explains that um, a higher sense is present in human form we should act according to superior advice in order to attain eternal happiness and go back to god and um, Uh, and so prabhupada is saying that it is significant in this verse that the government and the natural guardian the father should educate subordinates and raise them to krishna consciousness so the reason why th- there is a relevance of this verse also is because in today's verse there is a mention of <clears throat> of um, preaching in the purport if you see prabhupada's purport um, a pure devotee is not able to tolerate the fallen conditions of the living entities and we will see the little bit more of that but uh, a meditator a person who is uh, able to see able to meditate upon the parmatma in the heart and is able to see that yes krishna is in me krishna is in everybody everybody is part and parcel of krishna and he is able to see that um, everyone is situated in krishna and he is able to see that krishna is situated in everyone but if he is attempting to understand this for the sake of one's own advancement for one's own brahma saukhyam anantha brahma saukhyam if uh, oh i can be eternally happy if a person is doing like that then that is one level of yogi that is also good nothing bad about that it is one level but a even higher level a even higher level is when he understands that oh he is a part and parcel of krishna he is the part and parcel of the supreme reservoir of all pleasure why is he suffering like this why is he in distress we cannot i cannot let this happen like this it doesn't matter to me whether i am in happiness or distress but i cannot tolerate the distress of other living entities when a person is able to feel this that person is actually a dearest dearmost servant he becomes a dearmost servitor of the lord and in that mood prabhupada is saying here it is significant in this verse that the government and the natural guardian the father should educate educate the um, the subordinates so anyone who is a subordinate it is our duty to educate them then <clears throat> um further going further in the series of verses 
um, Shabh Deva says that um, when a person considers sense gratification to be the aim of life, he certainly becomes mad after materialistic living and engages in all kinds of sinful activity. He does not know that due to his past misdeeds, he has already received the body, which although temporary, is the cause of his misery. So Rishabh Deva is giving cause and effect. What is the cause of the misery? Why am I suffering? It is not, I'm not suffering because I do not have a single family home. I'm not suffering because I do not have a three car garage. I'm suffering because I have a body and I'm thinking I'm the body. That is the root cause of suffering. That is what Rishabh Deva is saying. So why am I trapped in this body? Actually, Shabh Deva is continuing, actually the living entity should not have taken a material body. But he has been awarded the material body for sense gratification. Therefore, it is, I think, Rishabh Deva is saying, I think it not befitting an intelligent man to involve himself again in the activities of sense gratification by which he perpetually gets material bodies, one after the other, after the other, go on. And whatever effort we take, it ends in defeat. So Rishabh Deva continues, Parabhavas Tavad Abhoda Jato. This has been quoted before also. As long as we don't try to understand this condition, or as long as we don't try to understand about the spiritual values of life, this is the exact translation from Prabhupada, one is defeated and is subjected to miseries arising from ignorance. Be it sinful or pious, karma has its resultant reactions. If a person is engaged in any kind of karma, his mind is called karmatmaka, colored with fruitive activity. And as long as the mind is impure, consciousness is unclear, and as long as one is absorbed in fruitive activity, he has to accept a material body. So there is a, uh, a state of mind that, we, that is called karmatmaka state of mind. Uh, that is a state when the mind is colored with fruitive activity. That is the situation for all of us. And until and unless from our heart, we are not inquiring into the real cause behind this, we will have to accept repeated birth and death, repeated state of misery. <clears throat> and then um, he says, um, there is one series of verses that he speaks where he gives instruction on how do you how do you overcome this state of repeated acceptance of material body? How does one? So is it, how do you get to the state where we are avoiding this uh, activities that, um, that are available, that are performed even by dog and the hog? What should one do? How do we get to that state of understanding? So he says, Ham se gurau maya bhaktya nuvritya. So he says, one must approach a paramahamsa. One must approach a paramahamsa, a person, um, highly elevated Paramahamsa, a spiritually advanced spiritual master. And in this way, you should place your faith and love in me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So as you know, Rishabh Deva is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. Uh, so he's saying, so Krishna actually, in the, in the incarnation of Rishabh Deva, he's saying that, he's instructing his own sons that they should accept a spiritual master, a highly elevated personality, Paramahamsa, as a spiritual master. And um, in this way, you should place your faith and love in me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You should detest sense gratification. Tolerate the duality of pleasure and pain, which are like the seasonal changes of summer and winter. And then, this comes the important point about cause and effect. Try to realize the miserable condition of living entities who are miserable even in the higher planetary systems. So this is what Rishabh Deva is saying to his sons. It is not enough that his sons simply try to understand that I am not the body. It is not even enough if they take shelter of an advanced transcendentalist, Paramahamsa. One should try to realize this, that because one may take shelter and may immediately fall down if one does not have faith in this particular aspect. Because we are so conditioned, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, we are so conditioned to seek after uh, this pleasure uh, and uh, direct our effort in mitigation of misery that we always think that there is a state of existence in this material world where my current miseries are mitigated. That if I was in that condition, if I was in a slightly different state of existence, then, oh, my current miseries will not be there. Maybe if I'm working in India, maybe if I get a visa, I go to America, my miseries will all be disappeared. They'll all go away. Oh, let me go you know, work hard to get a visa. 
and then let me go to america when you go to america and you get a visa you realize that oh this visa expires after 3 years after all i have to extend it oh this keep on extending after 6 years it will not be there what to do i have to apply for green card and then while you are doing all that green card is not coming like difficulty in taking home loan i cannot switch my job because next job will not do h1 sponsor so many anxieties have come see all these anxieties were not there in india but now in america all these anxieties are there but in the meanwhile there are other parallel states that we, that emerged before us yes i am in visa but he is also having visa but look he is having a separate house i am living in an apartment then you start working hard towards uh, a job or a state which will take us towards that um, house situation and then marriage situation children situation children school situation oh private school public school so many choices um and every field of our endeavor there is constant comparison with some other living entity or some other person around us who has got that same thing in a better way in some other way and we are trying to enjoy we are trying to be that person actually actually what we are trying to do is we are trying to insert ourselves in that person's condition and if none of these are satisfactory we will think about great politicians very wealthy persons who are even way out of our reach we'll think oh maybe this life it is not possible next life at least let me get some become a crorepati millionaire why can't i be the founder of facebook after all what did that person do <laughs> nothing he just found one every day i also code no every day i'm creating some website <laughs> why my website does not become facebook maybe uh, <laughs> let me undertake some uh, pious activities maybe next life i can become a facebook founder or something like that or maybe i can become the president maybe i can go to higher planetary system i can enjoy so rishabh deva is cutting off all of that in one sentence he is saying try to understand this please please try to understand the miserable condition of living entities who are miserable even in the higher planetary systems there is simply no sukha available it's just nothing available so um if you look at our society today <laughs> there is no sublime aim in life and what is happening as a result of that me go past this do you recognize this image this is circulating around in various news channels anybody recognizes this image online ಜೆಟ್ಸ್ just like cars are parked here near our temple like that they have parked fighter jets any moment the fighter jet will come out like that go you know, down and take off the air strip is ready so on the brink on the brink of a war between russia and and there is a, a satellite image it says satellite image shows a, a new helicopter and sukhoi 25 aircraft deployments um so these are news writers so like this our society is constantly at uh, and the brink of war and the brink of conflict you had this uh, january 6th protests uh, storming into the capital um, the um, what is considered sacred by the um, institution here such a large number of people gathered from all over the country just ready to storm and destroy whatever they can find in their path ready to kill the the uh, representatives kind of anger and uh, the the tension that is there in that uh, in that and the whole country being riled up um, some people arguing that this is justified these politicians deserve this and deserve worse than this and others saying no look at this hooliganism look at this uncivilized behavior and then those uh, people who are not even there in the protest at their own homes they are fighting saying who is right who is wrong so the whole country is ready to um, fight and then there are protests on hijab should should a person be allowed to wear hijab should not be allowed to wear hijab these people are sitting in their homes now somebody is going for a job somebody is doing something but everybody has an opinion on whether some girl child in some school in a remote part of in some other part city 
should that person wear a scarf on the head or should not wear it? everybody has an opinion not just the people who are impacted and ready to engage on a fight farmers you take the farm protests that recently happened um, so many months almost uh, more than a year there were farmers who were blocking the path from uh, delhi to various other places all the highways were blocked you take the uh, the trucker protests that are happening in canada that how the truckers at the uh, just blocked the entry from canada to us nobody could tra travel from canada to us by road all the entries were blocked uh, in that particular place and then um, uh, you look at the mask mandate the people are so upset about whether you should ma wear masks or not wear masks so if you see all this uh, tendency in our society to be just ready to pounce upon each other where is this coming from what is the cause of this what is the cause of this feeling that currently somebody is trampling upon my rights i have this right i have this entitlement but somebody is trampling upon this so this feeling of angst this feeling of distress where is this coming from what is the cause behind this so that is being this cause is also being analyzed by uh, rishabh deva and uh, this is of course the super hypersonic uh, nuclear warhead which is being readied by china um, which can travel at 1 mile per second 1 mile per second it can travel it's already ready so any time anybody dares to strike a nuclear missile against china it will come and strike that and strike it down so no, no there's no counter to this yet so rishabh deva says loka swayam shreyas nashta drishtya loka swayam shreyas nashta drishtis yo varthan samihet nikama kama an anyonya vaira sukhalesha hetu ananta dukham chana veda mudha so loka swayam shreyasi nashta drishtya people who are nashta drishtya completely blind they have no vision they have no idea what is good what shreya what is a better superior goal of life no knowledge of superior goal of life because they are blind and why they are and what are they doing this blindness they are simply yo arthan samiheta nikama kama they are going mad after the uh, uh, satisfying uh, samiheta is desire satisfying the desires through all the different ways the various activities of uh, accomplishing of material activities to satisfy the desires nikama kama that is uh, doing grand vision grand things big cha like this uh, hypersonic missile how many people would have worked how hard to build this uh, this uh, kind of a missile that can travel 1 mile per second just imagine how much hard they would have worked for how many years because and what are they aiming for simply to destroy somebody else it is not that they are working very hard to maybe give food to everybody in the world or to give some better knowledge of how to do agriculture it is not like that simply to build a missile and it is out of an anyonya vairaha anyonya vairaha anyonya vairaha is envy for everybody else they are very envious to everybody else sukha lesha hetu the temporary happiness so uh, if i maybe if i kill those uh, everybody in pakistan ah uh, i'll be so happy in india many people have this kind of a desire why don't we just bomb the hell out of the other country let everybody die i'll be happy so this is happening because of anyonya vairaha sukha lesa hetu ananta dukham so neda na veda mudha and they have no idea these foolish people they have no idea about all this and propa says in the purport due to being like a blind man he continues to act in such a way that he suffers unlimitedly such a person is a mudha one who simply wastes his time and does not understand the lord's devotional service <clears throat> and um, so um, if you look at uh, the next verse of rishabh deva there is a turning point in this now so we have talked about how um, the envy he is rishabh deva after having spoken about how uh, being blind when people are blind and going after mad after sense gratification they do big big activities they engage their entire energy in simply hurting each other because of the Uh, unlimited uh, the envy towards everybody else so rishabh deva now says what is the mitigation so he says kastam swayam tad abhignyo vipaschid avidhyaya mantare varthamanam drishtva punastham sagrana kubuddhim prayojayet utpatagat 
Uthpatagam, Uthpatagam, Yathadham. If a blind man, which has been referred to in the previous verse, if a blind man is walking, and you can see that the person, the blind person is walking, and there is a ditch in front of him. On the way, there is a ditch, and the blind person is walking, and he cannot see the ditch, and you are standing nearby. What will you do? You will just ignore and go on. What will you do? You have to stop him. You have to alert him. You have to say you are about to fall down. So, if a blind man's path, if there is some obstacle or something that causes him to fall down, there is a ditch or something like that. What is our duty? Any gentleman, not a pure devotee, need not go to Paramahamsa. Any person. What Shabdeva is saying is that any gentleman, any civilized person, will immediately alert that person. Say, Please don't do this. You are about to fall down. So this verse is saying, if someone is ignorant and addicted to the path of samsara. How can one who is actually learned, merciful and advanced in spiritual knowledge, engage him in fruitive activity and thus further entangle him in material existence? So in all in our life, we come in contact with people who are subordinates, who are in our, under our influence. And if we encourage them that, oh, today there is IPL, come, come to my house, let us have a party. That is fruitive activity. So if you have some knowledge, if we have got some Krishna consciousness, some touch we have had with Prabhupada, we simply cannot engage anybody in a fruitive activity. Simply, it is a it is a most uncivilized behavior if somebody does this. According to Rishabdeva, if somebody has been informed about the higher values of life, about Shreya, and in spite of that, he is engaging other people in fruitive activities, it is a most uncivilized, barbaric activity. If a blind man is walking down the wrong path, how can a gentleman allow him to continue on his way to danger. How can he approve this method? No wise or kind man can allow this. This is the vision of a devotee. The perfect devotee is the sincerest friend of all the living entities. Because a person in Krishna consciousness is happy, he tries to distribute the knowledge of Krishna everywhere. This is not just what a knowledge that has been imparted to the person. It is a knowledge that he has experienced himself also. Because we all can experience, that is how we are able to attend this Bhagavad Gita class week after week. Because we are experience, experiencing happiness in serving the Lord. Even though we may not know that is actually serving the Lord, we may or may not know. But actually it is. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, one who reads Bhagavad Gita is serving me through Buddha Yoga. He is saying that. Correct? So he is worshipping me with intelligence. So when we are reading Bhagavad Gita, when we are understanding Bhagavad Gita, actually we are engaging in devotional service, we are worshipping Krishna with our intelligence and that is making us happy internally. And that's why we are able to pursue this. So we are experiencing that a pure devotee is always in Krishna consciousness. And therefore he has no doubt, there is no mis there is absolutely no illusion in his mind, there is no doubt in his mind that this is the only way in which happiness can be obtained. And therefore he tries to distribute to everybody else. Since the perfect yogi tries to broadcast the importance of becoming Krishna conscious, he is the best philanthropist. He is the best yogi because he does not desire perfection in yoga for his personal benefit, but tries for others also. He does not envy his fellow living entities. He is the dearest servitor of the Lord. So, <clears throat> these are the characteristics of perfect yogi that have been described in this verse. Um, let us see a little bit more about these uh, these uh, these points in the next uh, five six minutes. So uh, Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter and that has been quoted in this purport. Nachata sman manushyeshu kaschin me priya krittamaha bhavita na chame chame na chame tasmad anya priya taro bhuvi. Nachata sman manushyeshu kaschin me priya krittamaha bhavita na chame tasmad anya priya taro bhuvi. Uh, bhavita bhuvi. That is, um, it has not happened, it will not happen. What is it that will not happen? And it will not happen in future, and it has not happened. Nachata um, sman manushyeshu, in all of mankind, uh, all of mankind, manushyeshu, kaschen, anywhere, may kriya, priya kritta maha. There is nobody else more dear to me. It has never happened that somebody is more dear to me than a certain kind of person, nor 
will anyone be more dear to me anya priyataro more bhuvi in future in future also nobody will be more dear to me so who is this person that krishna is talking about that is there in the previous verse so the translation there is no servant in this world more dear to me than he nor will there ever be one more dear so who is that he let us see that so previous verse in that he mentions ya idam paramam guhyam mad bhaktesu abhidasyati abhidasyati so idam ya idam this paramam guhyam the supreme secret so this supreme secret mad bhaktesu abhidasyati yaha mad bhaktesu so to the devotees abhidasyati explains so one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees that person becomes dear most to krishna so that is what krishna is saying and um, elsewhere prabhupada has described how of course krishna says that this uh, must be only bhagavad gita the knowledge contained in bhagavad gita krishna is asking that it must only be given to devotees not to anybody else but the devotee of the lord is more compassionate than the lord himself he is so compassionate that he runs the risk of giving it to non devotee and why does he run the risk because when he is approaching people there are people who are innocent who are open they don't have a preconceived notion they are simply ignorant they are not um, closed to new information they simply don't know and by receiving this bhagavad gita there is a chance that they might receive the knowledge with open mind with an open heart and thereby they might get out of this repetition of life so of uh, birth and death so um, with a view that there is a possibility because everybody is suffering the pure devotee is seeing that everybody is suffering and he knows there is no doubt in his mind that everyone is suffering in every condition of material life in this planet as well as in higher planetary systems that there is no doubt so he has no he cannot tolerate this condition this state where living entities with a spiritual identity who are actually part and parcel of rasovaisa of the supreme reservoir of all pressure that they are in this suffering state you cannot tolerate that so at the risk of violating krishna's order they take personal risk even though they might be in heaven or hell doesn't matter at at their great risk to oneself they go out and distribute this knowledge to others and prahlad maharaj epitomizes this mood of distribution of this knowledge in these two verses i'll just um, uh, read out these verses and then i'll stop prahlad maharaj is praying to narsimha dev naivo dvijay paraduratyaya vaitaranaya vaitaranyas tvadvirya gayana mahamrita magna chitta सोचे तथो विमुख चेत स इंद्रियाथ माया सुखाय भरम भरम उद्वहतो विमूढान नैवोद्विजे पर दुरत्यया वैथरण्या स्वैथरण्या दुरत्यया वैथरण्या दिस इज रेफरिंग टू द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड सो प्रहलाद महाराज इज सेइंग दैट आई एम नॉट टू बॉदर्ड by being in this material world this doesn't bother me yes it is difficult it may be but i am not bothered by this how i am not bothered by this how am i not affected by this because i am engaging myself tvad you are virya gayana mahamrita magna chitta i am always engaged in glorifying your wonderful class past times your uh, glories and i am singing and uh, just always en- engrossed in that but i i my only lamentation soche my lamentation is tato vimukha chetasa all these uh, people who are um, illusioned who are chasing indriyartha for satisfying their senses maya sukhaya for chasing after the satisfaction of their senses bharam udvahato um, vimudhan so the translation is o oh, best of great personalities i am not at all afraid of material existence for uh, wherever i stay i am fully absorbed in the thoughts of your glories and activities my only concern is for these fools and rascals vimudan who are making elaborate plans for material happiness and maintaining their families societies and countries i am simply concerned with love for them 
So this is the mood of a pure devotee, of a perfect yogi who is a dearmost servitor of God, dearmost servitor of the Supreme Lord, because he is not worried for himself. He is worried out of love for every living entity. Why? How? How can I let it be? Let these people be in this condition? And then Prahlad Maharaj continues in the next verse: Praye, praye, na deva munaya swami mukti kama maunam charanti vijane na parartha nistha naithan vihaya krupanan vimu vimu muksha eko nanyam tvadasya sharanam brahmato nu pashye praye na deva munaya. Uh, sometimes deva he is referring to the supreme lord Nar- narasimha deva munaya swami mukti kama they are the out of desire for their own liberation many of there are munis uh, transcendentalist who want their own liberation so what they do maunam charanti they take mauna vrata vow of silence and they vijane they go to some secluded place and na parartha they are not worried about other people Naitan vihaya kapanam vimu muksh eko. So I I am not interested in some something like that. I don't want to these leave these people alone here. Uh, all these kapanaha miserly people who are not utilizing their body, their human form of life for the highest purpose, and uh, uh, I, uh, leaving them here, I am not interested in my own liberation. Naniyam tvad ashya sharanam because I know that uh, naniyam there is no other uh, way to. Liberate them, than for them to take lotus sh- the the shelter of your lotus feet. My dear Lord Narsimha Deva, I see that there are many saintly persons indeed, but they are interested only in their own deliverance, not caring for the big cities and towns. They go to Himalayas or to the forest to meditate with vows of silence, mauna vrata. They are not interested in delivering others. As for me, however, I do not wish to be liberated alone, leaving aside all these poor fools and rascals. i know that without krishna consciousness without taking shelter of your lotus feet one cannot be happy therefore i wish to bring them back to shelter at your lotus feet so this is the mood of a pure devotee he is not interested in his own uh, liberation or deliverance his only desire is because he sees everybody else in comparison to his own self as being equal in happiness and distress he knows his happiness and distress is external their actual spiritual identity is to be full of satchid ananda you can see that and he cannot tolerate that they are all suffering like that so this is the comparison that has been done as well in the last sentence the purport the yogi who has withdrawn to a secluded place in order to meditate perfectly may not be as perfect as a devotee who is trying his best to turn every man towards krishna consciousness so uh, as as uh, the the uh, instruction of ekshabadeva to his sons one must accept the shelter of an advanced spiritualist transcendentalist paramahamsa amo om vishnu pada paramahamsa parivrajaka acharya that is our prabhu pad our dear beloved spiritual master shila prabhu pad not only he is paramahamsa he is also parivrajaka acharya so parivrajaka as a parivrajaka acharya he is spending every ounce of his energy even today in saving blind people like us from continually falling into a ditch we we get up and we think that okay i have fallen now the road in front of me will be good and we walk two steps again we fall down again we get up because we are vimudha cannot understand why am i falling down <laughs> so he is spending continues to spend every ounce of his energy and mercy is making it available to us and the mercy rain fall of mercy is falling sometimes there is a mango tree which gives mango fruit sometimes there is a jackfruit tree which gives jackfruit and if it falls on a hard rock a thing comes so we have to keep our heart our mind fertile by hearing receptively to the instructions of prabhupad and following his instructions and assisting him in his mission of spreading this krishna consciousness movement yes we are not in the state of pure devotion we are not a pure devotee but he has given us a formula how to achieve that state he is not telling us that okay i am a pure devotee and uh, you are not and tough luck you can do this 
chant Hare Krishna, nothing, that's all. He's not saying like that. He is saying, Prabhupada is giving us the formula, how we can attain the platform of pure devotional service. How can we attain Krishna Prema? That formula is available to us. And in that formula, the first initial steps are that one must approach a bona fide spiritual master. One must surrender to him. One must render loving service to the spiritual master in submissive spirit and inquire from him about these aspects and render service. So render service has to be first. And in that rendering of service, we know what Prabhupada wants, to pleasing of Yasya Prasada, Bhagavat Prasada, Yasya Prasada, Nagati Patohapi. So we have to please our spiritual master and in that lies our happiness. Pleasing Krishna, yes, that is our happiness, being enjoyed by Krishna. But how Krishna wants to enjoy us? It is actually by making us please his pure devotee. So how does Prabhupada get pleased? By doing service. He has already outlined various services. We have to chant 16 rounds minimum per day. Anybody who is not chanting 16 rounds must create a plan, a systematic plan. How within two or three months you can get to the stage of chanting 16 rounds. Not that for years and years we're chanting one round. The next year, two rounds. Next year, three rounds. And then I think three rounds is enough for me. This is all I can do. After all, I have so many other responsibilities. How can I go beyond this? That is not, that, that is not, with puja, me will happen. Only like a dog and dog, you'll remain. So we have to get to the point of chanting 16 rounds. We have to um, serve Prabhupada's mission by distributing his books and by helping in the construction of temple and various other services that are available. We should take advantage. So with this, I will stop here and see if you have any questions. Take Hare Krishna Prabhu. I I mean the point that you said, like uh, there is no one dearer before and no one more dearer to come. That was really um, uh, it was very impressive, Prabhu. Yes, Krishna statements, Bhagavad Gita. Wonderful, wonderful book. Eye-opening book. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. The differentiation between yogi and the Krishna conscious person is very uh, very admirable in the in the purport pro one person wants to do it for self whereas the krishna conscious person wants to uplift others yes. and the example of prahlad maharaj was spot on bro yes if very good well. uh, if a person uh, realizes uh, once that's a state of realization because the correct state of realize that means that person is not yet perfect. Yogi who is aspiring for himself um, has not yet realized that the way to please Krishna is actually see how if a father, how does a father become pleased when the children are cooperating? If one child is suffering a lot and everybody else ignores, will the father be happy? Father will not be happy. So to, to please Krishna, one has to know the mind of Krishna. One has to know the heart. What does he want? He wants everybody to go back home and enjoy with him in spiritual life, in the spiritual world. That's what he wants. So a good son, what will he do? He will, he will give his life for that. So that is the pure devotee. Thank you, bro. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Um, you have... Um, we have explained that if a person is engaged in any kind of sense gratification, he is called karmatmika. Yes. Any question to or 
or just an observation? Yes, I and this is just observation. Like okay. any any kind of sense gratification, right? That's correct. This yes. is correct. Yes. yes, any kind of sense gratification. Let me just uh, look at that. Uh, that is correct. That's what I. Uh, any kind of sense gratification. A person who is engrossed in sense gratification. That is karmatmaka. Because it is not that you can do one kind of sense gratification and then uh, okay, moderate sense gratification. It won't stop like that. Um, until we are freed from a platform of sense gratification, it is karmatmaka only. That one sense gratification will remain in our mind and it will influence. So Prabhupada's program has been created such that there is no room for sense gratification. There is just no room. And as we understand this and mold our life in such a way that we are able to adopt Srila Prabhupada's program, then we can get out of this, this uh, notion that I can take up this Krishna consciousness in moderation, just a little bit. And continue with my materialistic life. That is not a productive notion. It's not going to help because that's not that is not the formula. The formula Prabhupada gives is very strong formula because our disease is very very strong. It is so strong, it requires strongest medicine. So if let us say that your um, disease is being caused by some uh, reaction to some allergic food, let us say you have peanut allergy. Okay, let's say you have peanut allergy. Now, you, the moment peanut comes in front of you, you start sneezing, coughing, and you everything swells, everything goes, right? So now, if you say, all right, I don't want peanut the whole day, just every day, two hours, I let me sit next to peanut. Will that help you? No, peanut has to be stopped, 100%. So our, our allergy, the real distress, is because of forgetting Krishna. That is what the verse is saying. Our allergy, our disease is because of forgetting Krishna. So what's the cure? What's the treatment? We have to remember Krishna. So our life has to be molded such that there is no room for something else. Until the time where there is room, little bit also, that is the disease is persisting. We are allowing the root cause of the disease to remain and it will only grow from there. It won't stay there. It won't stay in that state. So that, that, is, uh, we, that is where the complacency sometimes sits in, thinking that this much Krishna consciousness is okay. Prabhupada has given me this dosage, I will just take this much dosage and I can live like that. Everybody will call me devotee. People will say that you are part of Krishna consciousness movement. I will get some social respect. Uh, and with that, I can continue my life. This is a, actually a very large number of um, uh, devotees in the Krishna conscious movement. Uh, you know, we are in this state. This happens to us. So one, that's why we have to hear Bhagavad Gita for and he, read Prabhupada's books where he does not make any compromise. Okay, if there are no other uh, thoughts or questions, I would like all, all of you to come on camera and repeat after me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Grantra Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki, Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada ki, Nitai Gaur Premanande,